Set it on his face like Nigga what it tastes like Ate that gloss on your lips tight Say my name baby talk nice uh, Fuck you weak ass nigga Every time I see or hear your name I get triggered Last bitch was lame best believe I'm the biggest They say I got game my only game is ghost to niggas uh, Niggas let it play and run game hmm. Better know I'm the realest Trying to do me dirty, gonna land you in your feelings Boss bitch, I'm with it My ex sat across from my side, nigga <laughs> And he ain't even noticed Introduce him as a friend Shit, then the day still rolling Pin two and two together, motherfucker Cold hearted, I own it Side nigga in his bag Cause he already know it yeah. Really, I ain't with that But I always get my lick back don't start shit you can't finish Hood bitch, big pimpin' Bad bitch, I'm winning. Big mama, no gimme I don't got love no more I don't wanna stop, restart no more No more tears, well aware of my worth I ain't got time, don't need no hoe I don't wanna talk, don't need no bro I don't wanna fuck, don't need no throw Back in my bag, all I need is the dough Been on my shit, all I needed was to grow They stay on my top, cause they know I'm the First thing I wanna do is welcome you to the podcast Thank you for having me, I really appreciate it yeah, no doubt. Um, first thing, if you want to just let everybody know your artist name and uh, where you're from and how it was, where you grew up. Yeah, so um, I am Illidale Boss. Everybody know me as Illidale the motherfucking boss. Y'all already know what's good. Um, I am from North Philadelphia, born and raised. Growing up in Philly was just what the name is. Like everybody that here in Philly, they all got their different stereotypes and everything about it. So it is what it is. Whatever you feel like it was growing up, then just believe it. But you know, no, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't easy or whatever. I don't live there now. Haven't lived there in a few years now. So, um, yeah, but all in all, it was, it was straight. It made me who I am. It built me to be who I am today. So, yeah, right now. Oh, yeah, I'm I'm very familiar with the area. Um, I lived near Kensington for like a year, so I, I know exactly where you're at. Okay. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so... What were you hearing, like, musically as a child growing up? And then what did it change into, like, when you got in front of the aux cord yourself? Um, so people would say, if people would ask you, like, how I am, they would call me, like, an old soul. Because growing up, I listened to a lot of, like, old school, you know, more type rap and old school r and B. I I love R&B and things like that. Um, I listened to Busta Rhymes. I listened to um, Lil' Kim, Remy Ma. I listened to like a lot of the older people back then, you know. Um, I still listen to them to this day, like um, the new rap or whatever that's going on, you know. I got mixed feelings about it, but you know, it's respect or whatever anybody that's doing this rap shit, or whatever, it's respect for them. So, cause this shit is a grind. So, yeah, no, I agree with that. Um, I discovered you from your song, uh, "Fuck Love." Um, amazing song. Love Thank the title. You. Um. I wanted you to come up here because I really loved your voice. I thought, you know, it's a natural talent. Um, talk about that single you released, Fuck Love, and then talk about some of your influences in your style. Um, So my influence for Fuck Love is I am now officially one year celibate. Um, and I've been single for about a year now. Um, so it's just like, I'm in this mode in my life where I'm discovering who I am, things that I like, things that make me feel good, you know, things like that other than, you know, what me in. So, um, that's where fuck love stem from. Um, I did get a little bit into like talking about my ex and a situation like that, because I was that type of chick. Like if you did me dirty, I'm gonna do you dirty too, but you ain't gonna know I did you dirty back. So, you know, but I have grown from that. I'm not that type of woman now, um, things like that. But, you know, that's where Fuck Love came from. Um, some of my influences, one of my biggest influences in um, rap and why I do what I do today is Eve. I love Eve, 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 because y'all already know she's a Philly rapper. You know, she came from Philly, things like that. And, you know, she just had a baby. So congratulations, Eve. You know, yeah, that's, um, that's dope. Um. Yeah, no, she's dope. I think she's super underrated, too. Like, she's a huge yeah. influence, especially on the East Coast. And I really right. love what you said about, you know, the backstory of your song. And, um, Thank you know, you. it's beautiful to watch um somebody grow to grow, especially, you know, the environment you come from. And, um, right. you know, the just like some of the things you were talking about on the song to see you like today and grown from it. That's great. Right. Thank you. I appreciate that.
Yeah, no doubt. Um, so when when how old were you when you think you got the thought in your head for the first time, like, oh, maybe I want to make my own music for a living? And then how was it for you going from that idea to like dropping your first song publicly? Because there's a huge difference when you drop it publicly. Because anyone you've ever known can say whatever they want. Anybody who hears it can say whatever they want. So how was that? Right, which I love it. Like, talk about me. If you ain't being talked about, then you ain't doing something right. You feel what I'm saying? So it is what it is. That's how. So I love the fact that all of like a lot of my songs, you know, I dropped an album before called I Can and I Will. Mm -hmm. um, phase one. So, you know, I dropped a whole lot of singles. I dropped a couple music videos. Um, So, and it's available on all platforms. And I love that about what I do. Um, So, but I started off like, doing like writing poetry and just writing like little lyrics down. I wasn't thinking about it in a music type sense at first. It was giving more spoken word at first. Um, but I did, I made my first song um, at 15 years old, got in the studio for the first time at 15 years old. So that's when my career really started. Yeah, no, that's young. That's young to be in the studio. Um, What do you think you've gained most like, from that age to now, like musically, just experience. Um, and also, I think a lot of female artists don't talk about this enough, like, because you have, especially with social media now, you have to a million different people probably coming at you in different angles that you don't expect. And they might use your use your music, you know, to, to try to get close to you. So do you have any advice right. for female artists, uh, underground artists coming up to deal with that? And also... Um, how do you think you've grown from then to now? Um, so my advice for like female rappers, young female rappers coming up in this generation, uh, people that's been doing it, like I've been doing it for about 12 years now, um, dropping my music on all platforms for a couple of years now. So it's just like, if you're doing this, really take it serious, really stay dedicated. Don't let anybody discourage you. Don't let anybody make you feel less than, um, you have to be confident. I'm not saying be cocky, but I'm saying you have to be confident because if you ain't hyping your own shit, ain't nobody else going to do it. If you ain't feeling it, ain't nobody else going to feel it. And promote, 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 promote. And focus definitely on building a fan base. Networking is the biggest key. And it ain't about what you know. It's about who you know. So keep your head to the streets and keep dropping your motherfucking music and don't let nobody stop you. Keep grinding. Um, it is. You know, rapping at 15 years old, from 15 now to now I'm 25, um, from rapping for so long and starting then at that age, it's just like it motivated me to who I am because, you know, taking all that time out from, you know, your young life, of course, like I had times where I was like, oh my God, it ain't going nowhere. I don't want to do this no more. You know, I'd rather go out with my whole girls, hit the, hit the streets, you know what I'm saying? Do yeah. me live my life but then it was like I was right back into the music like the music never stopped playing in the back of my mind so it was like I stayed hungry for it and I stayed dedicated and like I'm still doing it and I'm gonna continue to do it you know what I'm saying that's how I'm gonna feed my family that's how I'm gonna make it do what it do so yeah no I love that you touched on that part too right because um I think a lot of people have the wrong idea like as an artist like like look at sexy red right now like to a lot of people, like, she came out of nowhere, you know what I mean? But, like, people don't always see the backstory of how many times someone's failed or how many times, like, you know, right. you wanted to give up or, or no one likes the shit you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that's key, too, because not everyone's an overnight success, you know what I mean? It might take right. one song or one person you meet to change your life. Right, exactly. Like Sexy Red says, since we're talking about her, like, I personally, like, like I said, if... Even if I don't like listen to it on a day to day, it's not like my cup of tea. It's respect because, like I said, anybody that's doing this rap shit, it's a grind. It's hard. So do you. And if people listening to you, shit, I don't give a fuck what you sell. Like you better let them hear it. You know what I'm saying? And like she said in one of her interviews, she talked about how she wasn't even trying to be a rapper. She just got in the studio after a night, da da da. You know, and it just happened. So if that's if people like that, it's not her fault that people like what she putting out. So why waste your time trying to diss somebody who's making it out there and people being seen? And, you know, instead of working on pushing your music and trying to be seen on your own different, you know, because everybody got their own different come up. Don't worry about how anybody else trying to do what they're doing. Don't worry about who's making it, how long they've been doing it, how they got there. 
just worry about you. And a lot of people worry about other people instead of worrying about them, which is why they have such a hard, long road. And so, and that even took myself a long time to learn that, you know, and now that I know that it's like, it is what it is. Cause I was never a hater, baby. You feel what I'm saying? It just was like, damn, you know what I'm saying? I've been doing it for so long, but I have had big people, you know, papoos, you know, different people. Yeah who messaged me who's like comment under my post you know like what i you know like what they heard from me and seen from me you know what i'm saying and it's only a matter of time matter of time it's only a matter of time yeah no that that's exactly what i think you know when i first found you i was like damn like i was like she's like you're like on the cusp of like you know you just need like like one i don't know what it is like you're just like when i look at you and like hear your music i'm like damn like she's right there you know what i mean like Cause you can tell, like you can tell, yeah, you're like a, a half step to to breaking in, like right. Which is dope, and I think like all your hard work and you know your voice and just you as a person, like your character, like it makes it like so enjoyable. Thank you. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so obviously, um, you're you're like independent. You're not signed to a label or anything. Um, what do you think you need most, like, for you personally to take your career to the next level? Um, so yes, I am independent. I'm not signed to any label. I do plan to stay independent, be my own brand, but I do have a team and I do have my own label, which is Hands on Paper Entertainment. Shout out to Shot Beats, CEO and mentor of Hands on Paper Entertainment. I am the first lady um, and first female rapper on the label. So, you know, and I am my own independent brand. In the yeah. Ball. So, you know, um, what I would say is like run that question back one more time. <laughs> oh, if there was just like, you know, one or maybe two things you could put your finger on, like, what do you think you're missing or not missing? Just maybe need more of a push to just take it to the next level. Fan base, fan base, fan base, yeah. fan base and exposure. Um, I need more people looking at me. I need more people knowing who the hell Illidale Boss is, more people hearing my music. Like, I need to network with more people. Like, it's definitely the fan base and exposure for me at this point. Like, somebody, the right person need to see me. That's all I need. Yeah, no, I agree with you because I've showed at least 10, 15 people your music and everyone thought it was really, really good. So, um, I don't think it's the quality of music. Yeah, I think that's perfect for you. Just a fan base. And I think that's what a lot of Cause I've had a lot of talented people on here, you know, and they don't have a steady fan base. I think that's mm -hmm. important. Right. So I ask everybody this, no matter how big the artist is or how underground, um, if you could have three dream features from anybody dead or alive, who would it be? Um, so I'm going to say little Kim fire, but, um, and Adele. Yes, Ooh. they are three totally different artists. But all in all, they are very versatile. And that sums me up as a female rap artist myself. Um, you know, I love Adele. I love that kind of English country slang, that swag she got about her. Like, she's very different. I love Busta Rhymes because of just like, it don't matter how old this man get, no matter what he drop, he could drop something today, which he did recently, you yeah. know, and it's still hit. It's still hit. Like, he's, He's really good with his, you know, what he do. And little Kim, just because she paved the way for so many of us, you know what I'm saying? To really do this, no matter what type of rapper, Lord, you want to do that sexy shit, that nasty shit, that hood shit, whatever, like little Kim really pop it with it. And you know, like I love other people, like Cordy B, I love Megan Thee Stallion. They cool, you know what I'm saying? I love like all the good people that's coming up, Lady London, Scarlett. Um, of course, I love Eve, you know them, but... When it comes to the three people that I would get a feature with today, yes, Adele, Busta Rhymes, and Lil' Kim. I love that. Yeah, I love that list. And I love what you said about Busta. Like, he, mm -hmm. no matter when he drops, like, I'm listening, I'm downloading immediately. Like, right. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like, he stays current, like, no matter if it's in the 90s, 2020s, it doesn't matter. Um, right. And I think that's, you know, why he's lasted for so long. Um, where, where do you see your career, let's say, one day from today? Uh, so tomorrow, <laughs> um, I see my career, like, you know, really flourishing in the future, like really like becoming like somebody who the voice for people who don't have their own voice, like people really listen to my music, but they also use my music to be like, listen, send this song to your boyfriend, let them know how you feel or send this song to your mom and let her know that you really love her or send this song to the club let them put the dj play your song and get on you know get out there and dance and do your thing like 
I want to be like that type of artist where I'm got my hands in different lanes, not just one type of profile artist where they say, Oh, she's just this type of rapper. Like, no, like I can do it all. I bought it all. So, you know, like I really see my career taking off soon. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you on that. Um, what can your fans expect from you next or anyone that tunes into this and discovers you like what's coming next in the next few months? And uh, are we ready to expect another album from you? Yes. So I got an album coming. It's called She Woke. Don't worry. It should be debuting by the new year coming up. So 2020. I have a new single uh, dropping in the next two to three months. It's given by November, December. It's called um, Queen of Hearts. And I really, really, really love that one because I really talked about some deep things and y'all get to really know me as an artist and everything. So I'm really excited about that track. Um, yeah, I got another photo shoot coming out soon. Um, I just dropped one, Little Kim Inspired. So tune in to my Instagram at the De- real Illidale Boss where you can find it. Um, yeah, so I got some things coming up. Might do a little music video. It might come up popping. So, you know, just stay tuned. Yeah, no doubt. I'll definitely be tuned in and um posting whatever you do next. Um, let's just talk about the album coming up. Um, what's your process when you go into an album? Are you kind of just putting your hottest shit together in in one tape, or are you kind of like strategic? Like you wanted to go one to say like ten. Like you want people to listen straight through. So I'm really like strategic with it because naturally I'm a spontaneous person. So like you might not know, it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Very exciting, but it's also super scary, right? So it's like um, my process of putting together my album is I'll do at least 20 to 30 songs, soundtracks. I'll have my whole team sit around where I listen to it. We'll have some outside people come in, you know, to the studio. Everybody listen, everybody give their opinion, one through five for all of them. We pick like the top 10 or the top 15 best ones and we put it on it. And that's our process. Yeah, no, I, I love that. Um, I'm, I'm super excited as a fan of yours for your album. Um, I can't wait. I think it's, I think it's overdue for you. And, um, Let's just before you get out of here, um, let's talk about uh the label you are signed to. Um and just let everybody know how that that came together and um like what's the movement of your guys' label? Yes, so our label is a family owned business. Um when I was 15, I was introduced to um a cousin husband of mine studio. Um so, and they had the whole setup and everything going on and he had, you know, the people in there, everybody was doing their thing. And one day I just kind of like saw them and I had something written there, you know, like poetry or whatever. And I walked in there and I was like, hey, like, you know, let me see if I can do that real quick. Let me see if I can get a little spicy. And, you know, I got in there and after the first time I never left. And so it's like, you know, and we move as a family, we move as one. Um. And it's not a lot of people that's here on the label, just enough, you know, but it's dope. It's a family oriented vibe. Everybody got each other's back. Everybody want to see everybody when there's plenty of money out there. Everybody got it. You know, everybody just need to put their hand in the pot. That's what it is. And that's another thing I wanted to touch on is too much competition in the music industry. Like it's too many people gunning for each other next. If we really all like more people got on features, more people work together, put projects out together, more people can be heard. And that's more money money accumulating for us. Like y'all got to think smart. Stop thinking about this is this and this is mine and this is all that. Like it's plenty of money out here for everybody. Let's get it. Yeah, no, I I agree with that a hundred percent. I think if more artists came together and helped and I think, a big thing is I, I don't I hate how like if an artist has a name, they have to wait until an underground artist, you know, gets gets a hit or something to that, even though they've known about them, you know, they might reach out to you. They might say, hey, you're doing good. But like you don't get right. a feature from them until like you're stamped by other people, which I don't I don't understand. But um, yeah, no, I love and I love I love what you said about the label. <laughs> What'd you say? I say you're not popular till you're popular, they say. Yeah, that's true. And I also love what you said about your label, right? There's like you're you're mainly like one of the only people on it. I think that's good for you and your career because yeah. you, you don't have there's not like when you drop something, you're put on the wall until four other people drop. And I think like 
right. have like, a whole team behind you and everything you're doing, I think it'll move your career further. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And, you know, it's other people on there. You know, I have it's two singers, a couple other rappers, you know, people that do it both, you know. And we all, like I said, it's a family-oriented business. So we all, we rock out, we do it together, but we all stay in our own lane. So nobody have to overlap, and we have no problem, like, collaborating on tracks and stuff like that. So that's just what we do, and that's how it should be. Yeah, that's dope. Um, Before we get out of here, if there's if there's anything that you want to say, and if also if you just want to let everybody know where to find your music and just spell out um your artist name and Instagram. Yes. Yeah, so again, my name is Illadel Boss, I-L-L-A-D-E-L space B-O-S-S. You know the rest. Um, That'll be on all platforms, any platform you can think of. Type your girl in. I'm on there. Um, on IG, you can follow me at the real Illadel Boss, D A. Real a little boss, you already know rest. You know, so um I just wanna say shout out to Shabis, the CEO and my mentor. Without him, you know, y'all would have seen me, but I probably would have probably be a little bit later from now, you know what I'm saying? So he played yeah. a big part, but I do, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my dukes and all of them. Shout out to my family. I'm very big on family oriented. Um, shout out to Hands on Paper Entertainment. Um Shout out to all the fans, all the people that's out there that do know me, all the people that's going on me. What up? You know what I'm saying? It's your girl. Look at the motherfucking boss. Um, and I got something for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know if y'all heard my last single. It's called Saucy. Um, so I want y'all to go stream that too. Crack a bitch in the head off the rip. If she talking shit, you know I'm a slider. I keep the nine on the hip 40 and the whip I'm lit on fire. She can for exit for money to claim I ain't shit and claim I can't buy her. Bitch, you'll hop on the whip with a dick so quick so claim you a rider. Shit, fuck it, I'm good. Yo pussy ain't really that good. Niggas want to talk like me. Get a bite, they wish they could. Philly bitch got a tip like shit. Kill a nigga, I might. Bitch, y'all bark no bite. I ain't got to shoot, I fight. We can go toe to toe all night. Hey, so y'all already know oh. that story. Oh. So y'all go look that up. <laughs> On the spot. I love it. And like I said from the beginning, um, loved everything I've ever heard from you. You as a person, your energy is great. Um, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I can't wait for every, all the fans and everyone to see this and discover you. And anything you need from me personally, uh, I'll give you my number. And going forward, even after this comes out, I'll promote it for free. Anything we can do for you. Period. Let's work. Let's do it. I appreciate y'all. Shout out to Tomboy Podcast. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good day and be safe, yeah. okay? You too. Bye. All right, bye.